Hello and welcome to Middle Market Executives Thought Leader Network, where we speak to middle market business leaders about the key drivers of growth across the nation. Today we speak to Sherry Buck, CFO of Libby Inc., a manufacturer and marketer of glass tableware products worldwide. Libby today operates plants in the U.S., Mexico, China, Portugal, and the Netherlands. We begin by asking Buck to tell us how finance has had a hand in an ambitious business transformation currently underway at the manufacturer. Yeah, Libby has a really, uh, it's a deep and rich history. Two years ago when our CEO came on board, Stephanie Streeter, she really set about looking at the business from, you know, all around from top to bottom and disaggregating it and, and really we put together our strategy, which is really our transformation of Libby 2015. So um, the things that it's focused on is uh, looking at our costs, how we um, be as efficient and cost competitive in a very competitive environment. So as far as um, you know, finance's role in it, uh, I'd say our finance team has had and continues to um, you know, be part of the, the strategy development. And I'd say that um, you know, particularly as we look at the, the debt side of the business, that last May we refinanced our debt and was, were very involved in getting that refinanced and we continue to, to make payments down on the debt. I'd say our uh, finance teams were also very involved in a lot of the um, financial analysis around some of the big decisions we made around uh, reducing our cost structure and we've made some significant moves around um, staffing reductions and footprint moves. And so it, it's really part of you know, their day-to-day -day life and how we support the business in, in delivering the strategies and a, and a lot of analysis and scenario planning. So as a manufacturer uh, with deep roots in the U.S., how does Libby's competitive footing globally help it compete today? And how does it, how does it compare with the competitive environment, say, for U.S. manufacturers at large? Yeah, I'd say there's parts of it um, that I think would be similar. So um, the, the glass making is, is a process, and so um, from a manufacturing standpoint, you're trying to be as, as efficient as you can. So you're using lean techniques. Um, how do you get better at job changeovers? Um, you know, looking at all your uh, input costs, uh, you know, finance is involved in different hedging for that. Um, so I'd say all those types of things are similar. Um, because it's glass that we manufacture, um, as we think about shipping that from different locations, um, we do some of that, but I'd say primarily um, we're producing for the regions that we're in. So, so for example, um, we have a plant in Mexico that um, supplies, obviously, Mexico, and, and we do ship a lot into the U.S. just because of NAFTA. But for instance, in China, most of our glassware in China is for the China and Asia markets, um, and likewise in Europe. But there is a, a percentage of our products that then get you know, shipped cross-country, but you're shipping a lot of air <laughs> um, for some lightweight glass. So um, one of the unique things that, that I've learned since I've been here is um, there's a lot of art and some science to uh, making glass. And so every plant, um, just from an investment standpoint, can make all the different types of glasses. So trying to understand what the, the trends and requirements are, what kind of glassware, say that, you know, wine glasses in Europe, Europeans taste prefer versus kind of wine glasses in the U.S., and trying to have the right machinery um, to make those kinds because it does get very expensive from a, a transportation standpoint. What can you tell us about the types of information you're seeking daily these days? Just just given the variety of markets you're, you're currently competing inside, it would seem you would have some novel ways of, of looking at the world. Some of the things that we look at are, um, I'd, say, I'd say, industry data. So with um, we basically have a couple of markets that we, channels that we go to business in. We typically talk about our retail channel, which is selling our glassware at, you know, the Targets or department stores, et cetera, and then also our food service, which is our glassware in, in restaurants, hotels, casinos, places such as that. So in the U.S., there's a number of um, industry indicators. So given the fact that that's the business that we're in, um, we're largely dependent on traffic. So the more times that people are going into a restaurant, um, the more times that we're going to have replacement opportunities on people breaking their glasses. Um, there's a, a data source, NapTrack, looking at consumer traffic, 
we watch all of our retailers closely looking at what their same source sales and, and uh, ticket items are. Um, look at hotel occupancy rates because that's an indicator of people being out traveling, eating, whether it's in the hotel and other places. Um, I'd say largely in, in Europe it's a little bit more challenging um, because they're, they're a lot more lagging and just not as good of um, consolidated indicators, if you will. In China, there's been, um, you know, looking at what government changes are happening, I'd say we've been impacted fairly significantly in China um, as the new government came in place and they've put in, um, I'd say, uh, more tightening uh, consumption policies. They have something called eight rules where there really is, from a government standpoint, not, you know, not encouraging eating out and dining and hosting. Um, and so that's having a direct impact on our business. So I'd say it's a lot more challenging. Um, and so you're looking at those um, key indicators, looking at, you know, related industries. So hotel occupancy rates in China, um, you know, what's happening there, data that you can get your hands on. But it certainly is a, is a challenge um, to be able to predict that. And so you just try to get as much data and industry analysis um, that you can. We've been speaking with Sherry Buck, CFO of Libby Inc. Thank you for joining us.